I just refretted this guitar. Uh, but before I installed the frets, I planed down the fretboard to make it even, which made it a little bit thinner. So, if we keep planing the fretboard every time we do a refret on a guitar, eventually there will be no fretboard left. So what should we do about that? Well, let's talk. You might have seen this guitar before. This is my Les Paul R8. R8 stands for reissue of a 1958 model. So if this was an actual 1958 model, people would get really worked up if uh, anyone had done any changes to it. Um, anything, right? Because they want to keep everything original. Um, well, it so happens that I did modify this guitar. I uh, put the Dario strap locks on it. Uh, great product, by the way. Uh, and by the way, this is a non-sponsored comment. Uh, yeah, uh, but see, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, eventually everything goes to shit, which is also known as the second law of thermodynamics, which is something we can't avoid. Uh, I want to talk about that. Um, well, maybe later. So first, let me welcome you back to Guitar Quackery. Uh, I'll take you to the shop first, and then we'll talk some more. I'm halfway through a refret of a Gibson Les Paul guitar. Uh, this guitar appears in another video, but here we want to talk about another aspect of this refret. So let's have a closer look at uh, all the details. Uh, first, I removed all the frets. These are the old frets that came from this fretboard. I prepared a set of new frets, and this is the nut that came from here. Um, this fretboard was a little bit uneven, so I ended up planing it or sanding it if you want to call it that. Um, so by planing and sanding, uh, we do remove some material, obviously from the top, which makes the fretboard a little bit thinner than it was. Um, so now, uh, eventually this guitar will have to be refretted again. At that time, if we plane the fretboard again, we are going to going to make it even thinner. And then if we do it over and over again, we keep making this fretboard thinner. So eventually, aren't we going to run out of uh, fretboard altogether? And aren't we going to ruin the guitar if we choose to plane the fretboard every time we refret it? That's an interesting question. So let's talk about that. In this day and age, this guitar is a big deal. Uh, and an original 1958 Gibson Les Paul is even more so a big deal. Uh, what about in 50 years from now? Well, in 50 years from now, this will be a vintage guitar. And a 1958 Gibson Les Paul will be, I guess, an antique guitar. What about in 100 years from now? Well, this guitar will be an antique guitar. And so will a 1958 Gibson Les Paul. Uh, but how much will people care about these guitars in 100 years from now? What about in 200 years from now? And what about in 300 years from now? Will people really care about any of these guitars? Well, we can get some sense of that if we look back 300 years and we really think about how much we now care about the guitars that were a big deal back then. So let me take you to London to a museum where there's a painting, an 18th century painting, so it's about 300 years old, featuring a guitar player. And let's look at the guitar in the painting 
And let's really get a sense uh, about how much we now care about that guitar. How many people nowadays care about that guitar. And that will give us some sense about how much people in 300 years from now will care about any Gibson Les Paul guitars. There's one small painting featuring a guitar at the Wallace Collection. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many strings it's got. Maybe uh, we can count them. I know it's not a Gibson. Is it good enough? Well, obviously it was good enough at the time. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, so 50 years ago, this music was all the rage. Uh, today, not so much. Uh, and in 50 years from now, probably not, right? Uh, well, people will still play this kind of music, the kind of music that's played on these guitars, but it will become the same as Renaissance music is today, or, you know, Baroque music. Uh, it will become a niche, uh, and people still interested in these instruments will be fewer and fewer. In fact, if you go on guitar forums, people are already questioning if uh, the young generations will still be interested in these guitars because they listen to rap, hip-hop, Taylor Swift, etc. Times are changing. So going back to our initial question, um, you know, should we be doing any kind of aggressive work, such as planing the fretboard, refretting, um, changing the nut, whatever, modifying? Yeah, go for it, because uh, these guitars are made to be played, and if, uh, for example, the fretboard is a roller coaster. Well, uh, what's the priority to preserve the originality or to make it playable? Again, the guitar is made to be played. And, you know, let's not worry about how much this guitar might be worth to some other people uh, that we will never meet that will live in the future, if this guitar even survives. Like I said, the guitar that um, you already saw on my workbench will appear in another video, and you will see the full service that was done on that guitar, the refret, the planing, etc. But now I just wanna give you a sneak preview of what you will see in that upcoming video. Um, and I just want you to see some details of the fretboard so that you can see for yourselves why I had to plane it. The shiny surface is the uh, existing fretboard. So those are all the low spots. And here there was a high spot. Well, it's still high because this is still low. We just need to uh, make everything even. Um, I dust it off between passes, just like that. You can clearly see all the uh, high and low spots. So I'm going to continue uh, sanding or planing. Technically, it's sanding until um, I reach the lowest point. So it's easy to see. And then I will install the frets. So for now, I'll keep playing this guitar and it's gonna go through some wear and tear if and when I need to refret it or play in the fretboard, I will do it. And uh, I won't worry about what other people might, you know, perceive as value. 
I just want to play it, right? <clears throat> so, that's it for the night. Uh, yeah, it's late at night. So, if you want to buy me a coffee so I can keep uh, making videos late at night, there's a link below that says buy me a coffee. You can click on that and I appreciate it. Um, and, you know, uh, you guys have a good day and I'll see you soon.